Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 7th. Today we're going to check out this weak system moving through the Pacific Northwest today and see what we can expect from that. And then we'll be dealing with this strong storm system out here over the Gulf of Alaska. It's going to bring us our ridging coming up through this week. And then another system potentially next weekend. And then we'll take a look at the extended and this ridge. There's chances that it may back up enough to allow some systems to approach out of the Northwest. And so we'll dive into that a bit too and some teleconnections. And we'll look a bit at the rest of the country here as well. It's pretty quiet around the area right now. There are some interesting things going on, but we'll just dive right into it here. You can see some high wind warnings there for the Rockies of the east slopes of the Rockies there to Montana. It's actually some fire danger going to be associated with these high winds too. So heads up there. High wind watches and warnings in southeast Wyoming there. And we've got some wind advisories for Southern California as they're going to warm up pretty good this week and we'll take a look at some of the past weather that's happened down there kind of an interesting system that happened uh, 33 years ago today and this is the high wind watches and warnings for cheyenne wyoming so if you have any interest out there just a heads up that's mainly uh, west of cheyenne uh, looking at southern california here they're going to warm up pretty good this week as you can see in some of these uh, readings upper 80s possible and this day in history february 7th 1989 there was snow all the way down into the LA basin, a very unique system that affected the Pacific Northwest pretty strongly too. We got an Arctic outbreak up here, some pretty good snowfall and this cold air made it all the way down to the Los Angeles basin. Didn't snow at uh, LAX, but it did damage some of the region's strawberry crop and lemon crop. Um, and we'll take a look at that here too. So this is, uh, temperature at 5,000 feet. You can see as we put this into the loop here, you see this cold air just engulfed the entire west coast of North America there. And then you, at the very end of the loop, you can see a storm system that moved in there and brought that snowfall into portions of Southern California. And you can see how this cold air was just entrenched over the Intermountain West here. And this is that storm system there too. So you can see that low pressure came there. That modified Arctic air all the way out to the mountains of California down there. So a very unique Arctic outbreak there, which really hammered the Pacific Northwest, as I mentioned earlier. And check this out, 30,000 foot jet stream. Here you can see how the trough just opened up and got all the way down towards Southern California. So that was 33 years ago today. And looking at those winds out there in uh, mainly central and eastern Montana there you can see some gusts to 80 miles per hour and of course the windy conditions may increase the risk for grassland fires over central Montana this does include Helena Montana and generally not Butte Boulder or Bozeman so if you're traveling north of I-90 just a heads up there and taking a look at the system moving in today you can see this is going on now this frontal system just passing through there's still some residual showers behind it and then you can see a little bit of a convergent zone signature on into this evening mainly north of seattle very weak at this point and checking out what we're going to be dealing with as far as visibility values you see the frontal system moving through now so not a bad day today actually probably can have some sun breaks it won't be too bad out there Going into Wednesday morning, you see that fog start to settle in some of the Willamette Valley mainly and eastern Washington and some of the valleys through Idaho there. And as we go into Wednesday morning, you can see some of the south sounds are getting in on that fog action there too. So we're going to look at the European, which we can look at a little bit further here too. There's the frontal system moving through. Here we go into Tuesday morning. You see the European has a little bit more fog for the uh, Puget Sound. Look at the Willamette Valley really engulfed tomorrow morning eastern washington starts getting pretty foggy too but it looks like we do break out fairly nicely tomorrow afternoon um putting this into motion into wednesday morning you'll see that fog redevelop a little bit here for the puget sound willamette valley not quite as bad as tomorrow morning and eastern washington still some stagnant air over there the winds are going to be pretty light over the next few days here and as we go into Thursday morning, you can see more widespread fog almost all the way out to the Washington coast there, down the Willamette Valley. Going into Friday morning here quickly, you see the fog really entrenched now through Willamette Valley and Puget Sound. Let's see if we break out. We do break out Friday afternoon. Fog returns Saturday morning, and, and there's still some fog hanging around the north sound here. But looks like we might be breaking out in the afternoons there. So these can lead to some really nice days. So get out and enjoy that. Um, if you are in an area that does break out of the fog or you can just you know drive around the sound of the Willamette Valley a little bit there too and if you're in eastern Washington it looks like you may even break out during some of the afternoons there 
So looking at the winds here, you can see the frontal system that just moved through. Not very strong winds. We had some 31 mile per hour gusts early this morning here at my house. So a little bit breezy, but nothing to write home about. And then you see the winds go pretty light after this as we go kind of an offshore flow or just a variable flow across the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to lead to the fog formations in the morning. And hopefully we will break out in the afternoon so we can enjoy some of those nice sunny afternoons. But here's the culprit. So you can see that weak system that just brushes us to the north here going through British Columbia. And look at this powerful ridge that's going to build in behind this. This is Wednesday morning here. Just a extremely unusual high pressure system for this time of year and you can see it just dominates our weather as a weak system just brushes by it's really gonna have no impact on our no, on our sensible weather here in the pacific northwest as this ridge continues to dominate our weather you see a next system come by here through sunday into monday morning as it moves down through the northwest so there's we might get a convergent zone out of this through the Puget Sound. We could get some mountain snows. We'll have to see how this develops. We'll be looking at it over the next few days, but this does give some hope in the extended that we might break up that stagnant pattern. But this ridge, look at this thing. It just won't leave us alone. It redevelops again off our coast. And then in the very extended, another system approaches out of the Northwest on the North side of that ridge as well. So we just can't kick this ridge out of here, but maybe there's some hope in the future. I want to check out the wind, the temperatures aloft here. Look at down in California. This is 2,500 feet. You can see just how warm it is down there. And see some of this heat make its way up into Oregon into Thursday and Friday and Saturday and morning there. Some pretty warm temperatures aloft all the way up through western Washington. So this is not going to do our snowpack any favor, especially down into Oregon and California. I mean, this can really decimate a snowpack, this kind of stagnant pattern here with this ridging and then you'll see the next system move down through here on monday bring some colder air to the region finally as that settles down over the west so taking a look here we can you can almost see a signature of a thermal trough here look at this on into you can see this almost like a summer thermal trough up through california here towards southern oregon as this ridge just is going to create some offshore flow going down through there. And right here, you can kind of see it. They're a very weak, subtle thermal trough on into Saturday. So I thought that was interesting as I pointed out. So here's surface temperatures. Here we go into Monday, you know, lower 50s for Seattle tonight. Today might be pretty good if you're not any under any convergence zone activity. You might get some sun breaks through the area today. And you can see 50s all the way through the valleys in the lower areas of eastern Washington and Oregon. Willamette Valley and Southern Oregon coast get nice and warm again. Going to Tuesday morning, the fog should be entrenched over much of the Willamette Valley and areas of Southern Puget Sound at this point. But you can see areas warm up into the lower 50s. Check out how California just really, the temperatures really warm up down there. Looks like there's gonna be some upper 60s all the way down to Los Angeles. <clears throat> But anyway, let's take a look at that ridge from a little bit further out here. You can see it build up really midweek. And that ridge is just dominant until that next system tries to swing down through there. We'll see how that develops and see how this works out. But there is some hope that this ridge starts to back up again. But we've been talking about this, as you know, for uh, two, three, four weeks now, hoping that ridge would back up. We got a little bit of a break last week, but... We'll have to see how these systems play out. I mean, this ridging is just very dominant off our coastline. And even further look out here, you can see this weak system that just brushes. Here's Washington, Alaska, Pacific Ocean. There's Asia and China. And if we put this into motion, you see that ridge just build up over us. And we just get this troughing that just keeps building out here. And it just keeps throwing this ridge downstream of it. You can see... It redevelops here on into Friday morning and just continues that ridge for our area. And then we get a little bit of a, a wave riding over the top of that into our region uh, Sunday into Monday for our next potential system. But then that ridge remains strong and just offshore. But any if this can track a little bit further west, we can start getting some systems in here. So we'll watch the evolution of that ridge as we go into the future here. Here is precipitable water. And you can see 
these systems that just keep developing out over the open ocean here and drive this uh, at these atmospheric rivers north and that is and you can see the ridge on the other side of that there too so this brings us let's back up to monday sunday you can see that system on sunday into monday riding over the top of the ridge there but still not a lot of moisture associated with those systems that come over from the northwest for us and like we talked about yesterday pacific ocean is just kind of a you know, you can see all the precipitable water that resides there. So this is, that's why this area has such a major influence. Why El Nino and La Nina, that's why we pay attention to it so much. And <clears throat> that's why the Madden-Julian oscillation is an important feature. I'll probably be talking about that a little bit more. I didn't go into it a lot of detail in yesterday's video, but we did talk about it quite a bit. I'm still learning about it. There's so much to learn about it. There's so many other teleconnections and factors that go into this. There's Rossby waves. And there's other equatorial waves that are, play into this. So I'm still learning about that. And we'll go over that more into the future as we, you know, as we're looking into the weather for the Pacific Northwest. Here is the Pacific North American Oscillation forecast coming up here. This is the European Ensemble. You can see after February, we drop down into negative territory again. And obviously, this doesn't mean we are going to drop into colder than normal at this point. It's just kind of hinting that there should be ridging out there near the Aleutians. But the problem is when this is off a little bit, that ridging ends up a little bit closer. And, and so technically it was showing, it is showing a negative value, but that ridging is too close where it steers things east of the Rockies and we still don't get many systems moving through. So that's where we're at now. We don't have a lot of confidence in this Pacific North American oscillation at this point. We'll watch it over the next few days. See if the forecasts keep pointing to it, and we'll see if there's any kind of relief on this ridge, uh, in the ridge on our doorstep. So, yeah, so again, Puget Sound convergence zone moving through. Then we're going to have morning fog, pro possible afternoon sunshine through the Pacific Northwest. So get out and enjoy that. And some pretty good heat going down through California, some winds through Montana. And other than that, it's pretty quiet around the country right now. So um, keep leaving feedback in the comments if you would and click like and subscribe if you would also turn on your notifications helps the youtube youtube algorithm for me and i will talk to you guys again tomorrow oh and i'm working on a puget sound convergent zone video i'd like to explain that in great detail so everybody can be a little bit wiser as to how that forms and what kind of features and what kind of weather that brings the puget sound region on into the cascades so i will talk to you guys tomorrow thanks for watching